Hello Deluxe Humans and welcome back to another video. As I promised you last week, today we are talking about isometry, isometric perspective or shall I say isometric projection. Because perspective is actually not the correct term here. Now you might be familiar with the isometric aesthetic from computer games or illustrations and today I'm going to show you how you can achieve the same thing in Figma with just two very simple standard plugins. Now as I mentioned perspective is not fully correct because in a perspective, so in a proper 3D space Actually, the objects tend to get smaller the further away they are from the viewer or from the camera. In an isometric projection though, all objects remain the same size no matter how far away they are. The key to an isometric projection is that everything is viewed from an angle of 120 degrees or that things are rotated by 30 degrees. Just keep these numbers in mind, you will need them later. The easiest way to achieve isometric projection in Figma is by using a plugin called Isometric. I will of course link this down below in the description so make sure you find the plugin there and install it to try it out. Of course all the plugins I'm talking about today are free to use and are very very easy to handle. Now Isometric lets you flatten any object that you have into an isometric view. No matter how complex it is, so you can use a whole group or a screenshot or text or whatever you like. In our example we will use a screen design and give it a nice and stylish isometric view. So we're pulling up the plugin, selecting the frame that we want to bring into the isometric projection and that's it. As easy as that. You can select the direction you want your projection to be in, but that's all the options you have in this tool. Give you a layer, a little bit of a shadow to lift it from the background and enhance the isometric aesthetic. Now this was a simple trick, but what about isometric objects? Of course, these you can achieve relatively simple with another plugin. Let's start with drawing a cube. To make a cube in Figma, we will start with a square. For simpler purposes, we will have the square in 100 by 100 pixels. You will see why in a second. Now, the plugin that we are using is called Scudet. Scudet, I introduced it in last week's video already, is a simple plugin that lets you skew objects. So basically distort them um, in either a vertical or horizontal way. You can do this by pulling the little range selectors, whatever they are called, to 30 degrees. As I mentioned, we are looking at objects at a 30 degree angle. So we will take our square and skew it by 30 degree and then rotate it by another 30 degree. And boom, we have our first isometric side. Now to turn this into a proper cube, we will need two more sides. One for the left side and one for the right side. We will just copy paste the same square and skew it again by 30 degrees, just in a different direction. Scale down the height of the squares by roughly 86%. And then you can essentially just copy paste the same thing and flip it on the horizontal axis. And now we have a square. To even enhance the square aesthetic, we will put a little bit of shading on top of these layers, just black by 10 or 20% on top of the existing color. This will allow you to change colors later and to also adjust this shading a little bit. And now you can group your objects, copy paste them and resize them to, for example, create an isometric bar chart. If you want to, you can create multiple cubes to group them to boxes, objects, whatever you desire. But what about round objects? A cylinder, for example. 
Now this one's really easy to achieve. We start with a circle of course, which we will also skew by 30 degrees and then rotate it by 30 degrees to create a flat circle. Now all we do to create a cylinder is we duplicate the thing and then we create a fill layer, a rectangle that matches up the tangent of the now flattened square as good as possible. Group down the bottom circle and the fill rectangle to create a fill shape. Now you can work with the color overlay as well to yeah, create a more natural shaded look, but also you can play around with gradients. One way that I enjoy for bar charts in infographics, for example, is having a gradient from top to bottom, making things a little lighter to the bottom to create a really cool apple-like aesthetic. But you can also have the gradient going from left to right to create a little bit more of a natural lighting and a more matte surface. If you add additional color stops of white or even brighter colors, you can create more glossy materials and an almost glass-like or high polished plastic look. Go play around with these gradients to see what kind of materials you can achieve and how far you can push this aesthetic. You can also download isometric stock illustrations and enhance them with the things you just learned in Figma. If you adopt the colors of the underlying illustration or even put text layers which you convert to an isometric view, you get a beautiful and very integrated and easy and quick to do infographic style that really stands out from the rest. I hope this was helpful for you and I hope you will try this yourself. Let me know in the comments below how it went and what other tricks you have when it comes to creating isometric illustrations. I will see you in the next video. Really looking forward to that. Bye.